Humans get a lot of credit, much of it deserved, but since we are the only organisms on Earth with a written language, we tend to give ourselves the most prominent positions in any historical event. The space race was a notable exception. Since the very beginnings of space exploration, animals were used as test subjects. Not an uncommon practice in a field as young and fraught with danger as rocketry, but lab animals don't usually become household names. Because the US and the Soviets wanted to make a big deal about their space achievements and the public was eager to hear about them, these test animals often ended up being the face of the space race, before humans could take all the glory. Arguably the most well-known space animal was Laika. She was a dog the Soviets sent into space in 1957, and the first animal to orbit the Earth. Laika did not survive her trip, but she is memorialized with a plaque and monument at the Russian cosmonaut training facility. She has appeared on stamps, in movies, and a graphic novel. And for a time, there were Laika branded cigarettes and matches. She's even name dropped in an arcade fire song. At the same time, NASA sent several primates into space, many of whom became minor celebrities. One chimpanzee named Ham was buried at the International Space Hall of Fame, complete with a memorial service. Anyway, animals have a long and celebrated history in the development of spaceflight, so it shouldn't be too surprising that the first Earthlings to reach the moon and safely return weren't human. They weren't primates or dogs, they were two Russian tortoises. But they have no monuments in their honor, much less an arcade fire song, they were given no glorious funeral, and their names aren't memorialized in the elite pantheon of space explorers. In fact, they had no names at all. So here's the story of the tortoises that beat humans to the moon. This was in 1968. The race to the moon was on its final lap, and the Russians were about to lose. For so long, the Soviets had held the lead in the space race. They had sent the first satellite into orbit, got the first man into space, conducted the first space walk, and landed the first spacecraft on the moon. If everything had gone to plan, the Soviets would have orbited the moon in 1967 and landed in late 1968, easily beating their American competition. But a series of rocket failures, mechanical issues, and a lack of funding kept pushing their timeline back. Now it was September 1968, and they were no closer to getting there. Just the year before, the first human fatality during spaceflight occurred, when the parachute on a re-entry vehicle failed to open. Cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov was killed on impact. After that, the Soviet rocket scientists had to face the fact that their spacecraft weren't quite ready for human occupants. But that didn't mean they couldn't use Russian tortoises. At first glance, these sedentary, slow-moving reptiles seem like unlikely cosmonauts. Russian tortoises spend much of their time searching for food or mates, and not much else. In fact, in times of extreme cold or heat or scarcity of resources, the Russian tortoise often spends nine months out of the year in estivation. For an organism with a lifespan of 40 years or more, that's not a negligible chunk of time spent asleep. Anyway, if these two tortoises had lived a life more typical of their species, they would have had a long and almost entirely uneventful and largely inactive future to look forward to. But fate and the USSR had something else in store. The mission was designated Zond 5. It would be the third attempt by the Soviet space program to circumnavigate the moon. It wasn't without its dangers for the tortoises. Exploding was not an uncommon occurrence in the Zond program. Several missions had exploded before even reaching outer space. Above all, both Soviet and American scientists weren't completely convinced that a trip through the Earth's radiation belts and the cosmic radiation of space was entirely survivable. How the tortoises fared would give them a better idea. So the chances of success weren't great, but the tortoises had a couple things going for them. They were pretty small. Russian tortoises rarely grow larger than a classic birthday cake. That meant they wouldn't take up much space or add much mass to the launch vehicle. They were endemic to Central Asia and popular in the pet trade. Soviet launch facilities just happened to be situated in the middle of the Kazakh desert, smack dab in the tortoises' home range. Therefore, they could count on a steady supply of Russian tortoises to be readily available. So, in September 1968, Zond-5 and its crew of Russian tortoises were ready for launch. They sat in the spacecraft for 12 days, completely restrained, without food or water. This period of fasting was to ensure that any deleterious effects of the spaceflight would be attributed to the conditions of the flight itself, and not any other earthly factors. As I mentioned, Russian tortoises were accustomed to being immobile for long periods of time without food or water. They were mostly fine. In the space capsule, the only company the tortoises had were a handful of seeds, some fruit fly eggs, mealworms, a smattering of bacteria, and a full-size mannequin equipped with radiation detectors. Just after midnight on September 15, 1968, a four-stage rocket exerting over two million pounds of thrust flung this curious payload in the general direction of the moon. They would never see their homeland again. 
Almost immediately, they ran into trouble. A star tracker failed, putting the spacecraft off course, and jeopardizing the entire mission. Soviet mission controllers compensated for the malfunction by using the position of the Sun and Earth as guideposts, and after a three-day trip, the tortoises did eventually reach the Moon, becoming the first Earthlings to ever do so. But they didn't stay long. The Moon's gravity whipped them around its far side and hurtled the capsule straight back to Earth. But without a functional celestial navigation system, the tortoises would not come down as planned. Instead of landing in Soviet territory, they were now on a course that would have them re-entering the Earth's atmosphere somewhere over the Indian Ocean in the dead of night. Their angle of re-entry was much steeper than mission controllers projected, so for the duration of their descent, the tortoises would experience upwards of 20 Gs of force. For a human, that'd be like having a mid-sized sedan sitting on your chest. Thankfully, you'd only really experience this for 10 seconds or so before passing out and dying. So the Zon 5 mission would have been fatal to any human crew members. The tortoises, on the other hand, did just fine. Whether it was their small mass, or their compact size, or the fact that they are covered in a hard shell, the extreme forces of re-entry had little effect on them. It could very well be the case that Russian tortoises are more suited for the rigors of space exploration than us delicate humans. Anyway, after four days, the spacecraft was recovered, and after 12 days total, the tortoises were finally removed from the capsule, alive and pretty much alright. Not only did the Zond 5 mission make those two tortoises the first terrestrial animals to reach the moon, they returned with some of the first high-resolution photos of the Earth. They confirmed that an organism could make the trip to the moon and back without succumbing to radiation poisoning. And let's not forget the fact that these two tortoises had to be moving at Mach 33 to escape Earth's gravity, and thus were undoubtedly the fastest moving tortoises in history. But there were no ticker tape parades waiting for them, no bustling press conferences or lucrative movie deals. Their contributions have mostly been left out of the history books. And on October 11th, 1968, the first Earthlings to go to the moon and back were euthanized and dissected. The results of their autopsy showed no ill effects from the space flight. The only discernible biological consequences were due to the tortoise's 39-day fast. Although the Zahn program was supposed to culminate with human occupants, it never did. In December of 1968, NASA's Apollo 8 mission would put the first humans in orbit around the moon. After that, the Soviet space program lost momentum. Seven months later, there'd be Americans walking on the moon, effectively winning the space race for the United States. The Soviets would never end up sending a human to the moon. So to this day, the only Russians to go to the moon were a handful of seeds, some fruit fly eggs, mealworms, a smattering of bacteria, and the fastest tortoises in history. Special thanks to our Patreon patrons. Without you, the good stuff just wouldn't happen. So if you like what we do here, go on over to patreon.com slash the good stuff and become a supporter. Otherwise, you can like and subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell so you know when the next video is coming out. And I'll be back in a couple weeks with a new video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>